Well, good evening, everyone. A joy to see you out tonight on this beautiful Wednesday evening. Thank you for coming out in house. And also those of you joining us online, you bless our hearts by being with us online. And uh, we're so grateful that God's given us this time to come in in the midweek service to look into his word and to spend a few moments in prayer and encouragement in the Lord. Amen. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we are so grateful for the beautiful sunshine, the beauty of this day, God, that you have blessed us with. I'm thankful, Lord, for those that have come out tonight and those joining us online, and Lord, for their effort. I pray, God, that you would uh, bless them with yourself, and God, that you would uh, speak to them and encourage them and instruct them, Lord, and just do a wonderful work of grace in each of our hearts. There are many upon our minds, Lord, that are hurting, who are sick, uh, just struggling. And God, we, we lift them up to you, asking for your mercies to be upon them, for your healing, for your strength, for your comfort. And God, we are mindful of our brothers and sisters who are in times of, uh, in times of struggling right now. And God, we just lift them up to you. God, we pray that uh, you will be honored and glorified and that you would go before us in this service and prepare us uh, to hear from you. And we ask these things in the precious name of Jesus Christ and all of his children said tonight. Amen. Brother Brandon, if you will. Good evening. If you would please stand, we'll do our hymn for tonight. It's going to be 96 in your hymnals. We'll sing all three verses of Great is Thy Faithfulness. Let's lift it up on that first. Great is Thy faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with Thee. Thy hand hath provided. 
seated. And he is faithful unto us, amen. He is faithful uh, to his people. He is faithful to hear our prayers. Next Thursday, a week from tomorrow, is May the 4th. That is the National Day of Prayer. Uh, there'll be several of our churches coming together. We're going to be at the courthouse, the, the steps there, at noon. So I hope that you can come out and be with us next Thursday uh, at noon there here in Berea on the courthouse steps. Uh, for those that might be listening, they're having one in Richmond, also on the courthouse, I was told today. And so, uh, but hope that you can come out and be with us for a time of prayer in the midday next Thursday. Also, hope that you can be in uh, person with us this weekend as we're continuing on in a series uh, dealing with temptation. Uh, also, come at 10, get in a small group there, they'll be dealing with the same scripture and in a small group and learn together and encourage one another and there's a class for each one of you uh, and so come on out be in house we've been having good numbers slowly creeping up but boy that just makes whets my appetite to hit those three digits hopefully soon in sunday school uh, we had 93 95 97 the last three weeks if my memory is serving me correctly and i see back there rightly but uh, so we're getting close to 100 and i'd like to see us hit that soon and uh, stay there a while as well and continue to grow in our small group. So you'll be dealing with temptation and talking about that in your small group and then also I'm using that same scripture and theme for our messages and then on Sunday evening at 6.30 we're meeting in our fellowship hall about how to understand and get to know our Bible a little bit better. So I hope that you can come out and be with us and be praying for a wonderful weekend. Well, as I said before, I'm thankful that you're here tonight, and I want to ask you, if you will, to turn with me and your copy of God's Word to Psalm 119. As we go back to the golden alphabet, as some call it, Psalm 119, and then here in just a moment, I'm going to begin in verse 9 as we look at the second letter of the Hebrew alphabet in verses 9 through 16. It's true that uh, too many wait to come to Christ or to faithfully serve him and in doing so can waste many years of their lives. However, there's a great joy to come to Christ when young men and young women serve the Lord with a degree of fervency. Wouldn't you agree with that? It encourages our heart to see young people serving the Lord and worshiping the Lord. But to give God our younger years is to make the most of our lives and our relationship with Christ. Uh, too many think that uh, Christianity or the Christian religion is really for small children or really old people. And that's a shame that a lot of people feel that way. But here the author asks about the purity of the young man, or in our case can also be a young woman. It is more beneficial to sow goodness, to sow faithfulness, to worship and serve, to experience purity than it is to sow your wild oats, as we hear when we're young teenagers and young adults. So how can we keep our ways pure? Well, the psalmist here in these eight verses of the second letter in the Hebrew alphabet of Psalm 119 answers the question among other powerful statements of faith that we'll be looking at tonight. And so I'll begin reading Psalm 119, beginning in verse 9, and we'll read through verse 16, and then we'll come back and look at each verse individually for a few moments tonight. And the Bible says, How can a young man keep his ways pure? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. With my lips I declare all the rules of your mouth. In the way of your testimonies I delight as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. May God bless the reading of his word tonight. Let's go back to verse 9. How can a young man keep his ways pure? Well, the psalmist answers that question by guarding it. What, are, what is it? His ways, his life, by guarding it according to what? God's word, your word. 
When we're young, we understand that many passions are red hot, passions that can often steer us away from the Lord if we're not careful. Again, it can cause us to experience, as I said a few moments ago, many wasted years in our life with doing anything beneficial or spiritual or lifting up and building up good things in our life. With all these youthful passions that we all have experienced, how can a young man or woman keep their way pure? Not bringing sin, not bringing shame and many heartaches upon their lives. And when we are younger, we can have many ambitions in life. And that's exciting. I'm not against having ambition in life, nor is the Lord. But too often we want to do it our way. As Frank Sinatra and Elvis both sang, it's a great song, but it's a terrible way to live, is to live our way and not God's way. Too often we're not concerned enough with keeping our ways pure. However, in keeping one, our way pure before the Lord, we find actually protection through the word of the Lord. And so the word of the Lord, as the psalmist proclaims, is a great benefit to everyone, but it is especially beneficial for the well-being of lives, even when we're in our younger years, young adulthood. Early on, early on, we must choose what roadmap that we will learn from in life, don't we? We've all had to make that choice. And I like that old bluegrass gospel song, I'm using my Bible as a roadmap. How many of you have heard that old song? It's a great song. We've all had to choose uh, in life what's going to be our roadmap. And the psalmist proclaims that that's, this is the way to keep our ways pure. And we find protection of the word of the, of, from the Lord. And the word of the Lord is a faithful roadmap that will keep us from great sin and many dangers that seek to rob us of life. And we must understand uh, if our soul belongs to the Lord, Satan knows he cannot steal that soul, but he wants to destroy that life and the joy of that life. And so many young people, and I sense this, that many young people are extremely unsettled and anxious today. Uh, we see that in different statistics that you can look at. And the word of the Lord is absolutely necessary in keeping us from experiencing the many woes and cares of the world. There is no more noble position for a young man or a young woman to be than in, to be in a position where they are keeping their lives pure through the wisdom that comes from the word of the Lord. Amen. Let's go to verse 10. The psalmist says, With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. Well, the psalmist's heart had gone after the Lord. As a young man goes after the heart of a young woman or a young woman after the heart of a young man, the psalmist's heart had gone after the Lord. His whole heart, he says, with my whole heart, I seek you. He did not want to be a half-hearted or in a half-hearted relationship with the Lord as too many want today. Too many today just want enough religion to make themselves feel better about themselves, don't they? If it was poison, it wouldn't be enough to kill. If it was uh, medicine, it wouldn't be enough to heal. They just want enough religion to feel a little bit better about themselves. But they do not want to be all in after the Lord. They do not want to come, as the psalmist said, with my whole heart, I'm seeking you, Lord. It is always a blessing to see someone seeking the Lord with their whole heart in, in worship and in the work of the Lord and the witnessing for the Lord. There's no greater life to live, amen and in taking our whole heart and going after the Lord. We can give our hearts to many passions and to many people and we will in this life, but there is always the greater blessing when we seek the Lord with our whole heart. A half-hearted heart misses out on many blessings and misses out on many joys that only comes when we seek the Lord with our whole heart. What are you seeking for today with your whole heart? question we all must ask. Now the second half of this verse is a prayer following his declaration. He says, with my whole heart I seek you. And then he says, but let me not wonder from your commandments. So he understands that the possibility is there for him to wonder. The psalmist knew that not only his heart, but all of our hearts can and do wonder from the Lord from time to time. And that his word quite easily in this life we can remove ourselves from, and he asked for the Lord's help so that he might not do that very thing. He did not want to be pulled away with his passions or anything else that might remove him from 
the heart of the Lord. With my whole heart I seek you, but let me not wander from your commandments. And so we too must be honest and humble enough to ask the Lord for his help that we might not wander from his word or his commandments because we understand that our hearts are prone to wander after other fountains to drink from and when we're not careful and being aided by the Lord, we can get full off of the wrong fountain that makes us sick. And so the psalmist needed the king to be the keeper of his heart, and we all do. And so it is with all of us. Jesus is to be the shepherd of our hearts. Amen. Let's go now to verse 11. I have stored up your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. I've hidden your word in my heart. Now, what do we do that we might not sin against God in heaven? Well, the psalmist answers that. We read the word of the Lord and we hide his word in our heart hearts. So how do we hide his word in our hearts? Well, one, by reading it, of course. We must read the Bible. Sometimes it helps when we're writing it down in a journal or on an index card to keep close to us throughout the day. Keeping it close, reciting it, uh, reciting it, singing it, uh, even praying the scripture. And also, I would say sharing it with others is a good way to hide the word of God in your heart and to remember it when you share it with others. The psalmist is saying that his heart would be kept by the word of the Lord because he kept the word in his heart. Now many things in this life touch or move our hearts to certain action. But let the child of God above all other passions hide God's word in their hearts so that they will be kept from sin from shame and guilt that can result in the death of many things in this life. Now, this is not to be done just academically or just for the sake of testing your memory or building your memory, but it's a joyful act of affection towards the Lord when we hide his word in our heart, when we store up his word in our heart. And so the psalmist proclaims that he loves the word of the Lord because he or she hates sin and knows how that sin can keep us from knowing and properly being in fellowship with the Lord. This is our greatest ally in the Christian life in helping us not sin against the Lord and rescuing us from many troubles. And that is by hiding his word in our hearts and attacking temptations and trials when they come with it as the Lord Jesus did against the temptation from Satan. He quoted the word of God back to him. And so we too must be as the psalmist and hide his word in our hearts daily that we might not sin against him. And so now look at verse 12. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. And that actually, I didn't read that well. That's got an explanation point behind it. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. And so here the psalmist blesses the Lord for his goodness. That God has revealed himself to us. And that God has given us his word. But what a joyful thought to think and reflect upon the truth. That God, the creator, the sustainer, and the giver of life. That he has spoken to us. And he has shown us a higher life than what is in this world and what is mostly lived. Now, left to ourselves, man writes his own words for life. But they are not life-giving. They might be wit, witty, might be charming, might be pleasant to the ear. But man's words and man's words alone that we have come up with are not life-giving, so to speak. They do not lead to eternal life as the word of the Lord does. And so in his word, God gives us purpose. He gives us a plan and a promised place of joy with the ills of life removed. He's given us all of these things through his word. He alone is God, amen. And he is worthy to be praised, amen. He's worthy to be praised for his grace and many mercies that are new every morning. And that is why the psalmist said, I will bless you. Teach me your statutes. We bless God as his children because he's first blessed us. 
through the giving of his word that reveals to us salvation from a dismal existence, from death, from the grave, and he has saved us from an eternity separated from his reward and goodness. And so the psalmist blesses the Lord for what he has done by giving us his statutes. And so he says, teach me your statutes. The psalmist wants to be taught more of the word of God and more of God's ways. And so he asks for help because he does not want to waste his life knowing only man's wisdom and man's words. But he wants to experience all that the statutes of God gives to us. Oh, that we too may bless the Lord with our tongues and our actions, having a desire for the Lord to teach us more about himself through his word verse 13 the psalmist says with my lips i declare all the rules of your mouth you know with our lips we declare many things from where we want to eat or like to eat to what we like to read or what we like to watch or how the game went this past week we declare many likes and dislikes and a host of other personal information in this life that we use our lips for. I'm not saying any of that's negatively or bad in itself. However, the psalmist states that he will declare with his lips the rules that have come to us through God's mouth. He's going to proclaim God's word. Why? Because God's words are true. God's words are pure. God's words are holy. God's words are righteous. God's words last forever. Our lips were made to declare what has come to us from God. We were made to declare the goodness of God, and the word that has come. How do we use our lips? We have to ask that. To build up or tear down? To be thankful or ungrateful? To be pleasant and peaceful or prideful? To bring a burden or to release burdens? To be anxious or to be hopeful? To speak life or to take life through our tongue? To bring joy with our lips or sadness? It is important how we use our lips to praise the Lord. Amen? It's important how we use our lips, especially as Christians who claim to know the Lord and to serve the Lord. Again, the, the rules for life from God give life and happiness, and his word has been given so that his word will be spoken. Did you hear that? His word has been given so that his word will be spoken. And it is to be spoken by the, through the lips of those who know him intimately by grace and through faith. What about you, beloved? Do you use your lips to speak wonderful words of life? Or do you use your lips more to speak of negativity and sadness and death? And so we all must choose today to speak the words that God has spoken to us and speak life not only into our own soul, but also into the souls of others. And as I often say, that always begins in the home. Amen? Look at verse 14 now. In the way of your testimonies... I delight as much as in all riches. The NLT puts it this way, I have rejoiced in your laws as much as in riches. You know, riches in this world are helpful, amen, let's be honest. As a matter of fact, they're needed to survive in many ways, and it seems to take more money uh, to live today than it did even a few years ago. We need a certain amount of money to pay our bills, to meet our needs, and yes, even experience some of our wants that God blesses us with. There's nothing wrong uh, with money in and of itself, but as the scriptures teach, the love of money is the root of all people, or the root of all evil. That's often misquoted. People say money is the root of all evil, but that's not what the Bible teaches. The love of money is the root of all evil. So really, there is never enough money for most people because the more that they have, the more that they use, and then the more that they need. Amen? <laughs> That's the way it goes many times. There's never enough money in this world for the ones that love it and use it wrongly. However, we read in these verses where the psalmist rejoices in the testimonies of God as much as in all the riches. 
even if the psalmist had all riches, he still rejoices in God's word and rejoices in God's laws above all else. In the New Testament, we read where Jesus taught where our treasure is, there our heart will be also. And so the psalmist's heart rejoiced in the Lord's word. And so we ask ourselves this question. Do I rejoice in the Lord's word as much, if not more, than all riches? Verse 15, he says, I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. Meditating upon the Lord's word is an art that too often has been forgotten. Uh, For many Christians, because of the Eastern mystical thoughts with meditation, uh, many Christians have forgotten the word meditation. But It is a beautiful word to think and to meditate upon the word of the Lord. What I'm saying, too many times we get up from the table before supper has been finished and dessert has been served. And by that I mean we open our Bibles, we read a verse or a chapter, and we quickly put the Bible down and move on to other duties or desires in life. We don't take time to sit with open Bible and to meditate upon the words of the Lord. But here the psalmist says, I will meditate on your precepts. The scriptures are the most beneficial when they are not only read, but they're meditated upon. And this is where we fail too often. And I've been guilty of that myself. The psalmist here is saying he takes his time with God's word. He takes his time with God's word. He thinks upon God's words. He ponders their meaning. He thinks about how God's word can give him life, give him happiness, satisfaction, fulfillment, and joy. And when a person takes time to meditate upon the Lord and his word, The more that we are doing what he also said in this verse, the more that we are fixing our gaze or our spiritual eyes of faith upon the Lord and his word. And so when it comes to your daily devotion, don't jump up too quickly. Take time to reflect and pray about what you've read. This also is why we are too often forgetful hearers only and not faithful doers of the word. We don't take time to meditate on the Lord's word and fix our eyes on the ways of the Lord. So slow down, meditate upon the word, think about it. Verse 16, the last verse, the psalmist says, I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. I believe the more that we meditate, the more that we delight. The more that we meditate upon the Word of God, the more that we delight in the Word of God. And to the degree that we fix our eyes upon the Lord and His ways is the the degree that we will experience the joy that comes from His Word. Especially when we need His Word to guide us and to rescue us from harm and from making poor decisions in this life. Let we who know the Lord delight in God's Word. I will delight in your statutes. Even if the world delights itself in lower ways of life and living, let the child of God delight themselves in God's word and cherish it. Amen? Men don't normally forget something that they treasure up or that they meditate upon or that they delight in. So as we come to a close, note again what the psalmist resolves to do in this life through these eight verses that we've read. He says, I will seek you. I have stored up your word in my heart. He says, I declare all the rules from your mouth. He says, I will meditate upon your precepts and fix my eyes on your ways. I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. What precious verses these are to comfort us, to encourage us, and challenge us in how we as believers look unto God and look into his holy word. And so tonight, may our lives be moved, be inspired, and fed by the word of the Lord. 
May we also resolve to treat the word of the Lord as the psalmist declared in these verses. May we also hide God's words in our hearts so that we might not sin against him. May we also find and know the higher ground of God's word. And God's word is higher ground that we need when the floods are raging around our feet and our ankles. And may you experience the many blessings and joys of delighting in the word, the word of the Lord. To God be the glory. Let's pray. Father, we as the psalmist rejoice in your word. We thank you for your word. We delight in your word. And God, as we have taken these few moments tonight to reflect upon your word, Help us, O oh God, to store it up, to treasure it, O oh God, that it might guide us and strengthen us in our spiritual journey, and that we also, like the psalmist, may fix our eyes upon you. The days are dangerous in many different ways, and so God, rescue us from the traps that our enemy sets for us. Help us, O oh Lord, not to waste the years, but to look into you and to live fervently and passionately with your word open and ever before us. God, work in our hearts and bring fruit from this time that we've looked into your word tonight. And we'll be sure to give you the glory. We rejoice in you. And we ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ. And all of his children said, Amen. Thank you for those of you online for joining us tonight. We pray you've been blessed. Again, if you can, uh, be with us in-house Sunday morning at 10 for our small group Sunday school classes and then morning worship at 11. Sunday evening worship is at 6.30 in the fellowship hall for a few weeks as we look into getting to know your Bible better and understanding it better. So may the Lord bless you until then. Bye-bye.